Good morning, Coasty Kids. We are excited to be here with you this morning. My name is Becky Sheltman, and I am one of the lead teachers here at Coasty in the Coasty Kids department. Hi, I'm Karen Gurton, and it's so good to see all of you. I'm actually the director of the Coasty Kids ministry, and I'm also the lead teacher in the three to five year old class. And I'm looking forward to today's lesson. Hope you'll enjoy. Now, I can't see any of you. Why are you squinting? Well, sometimes when you squint, you can see a little clearer, but I still can't see you. Oh, well, I hope that you guys enjoy this week. We're talking about focus. Focus, taking a closer look. And all this month, we're talking about faith. So we're gonna focus on faith. So faith, sometimes we have to squint or focus on things that we might not see, right? Do we see God? No, we don't. No. But we know that he is there because we have faith. Now we're going to step back and talk about focus, okay? There are some things that we can use to help us focus. We can use our eyes, right? We can use our eyes. We can use a telescope. And we can also use a microscope. Miss Karen, what is a telescope? A telescope helps us to see far away. Far away things. What is far away? Hmm. Maybe stars in the <gasps> sky. Maybe stars. Good. And then what is a microscope? A microscope is something that helps us to see something close up. Things that are small. We use a microscope with things that are very, very small that we can kind of blow up and see when they're really big. So I'm gonna show some pictures on the screen and you guys, wherever you are, guess and see if, if we would use our eyes to focus, a telescope to focus, or a microscope to focus. Now we're gonna give you a few seconds to try to guess and then we're gonna um, say the answer here right um, right now so we'll give you a few seconds you guess wherever you are and then we'll tell you the answer okay all right are you ready miss karen yes i'm ready okay all right our first one <gasps> what is that that is the moon hmm do we use our eyes do we use a telescope or do we use a microscope Hmm. A telescope, because it's far away. We use a telescope. We can focus on the moon with a telescope. That way, we can actually see what the moon looks like. It makes the picture clear, okay? All right, so next. Oop. What is this? That is an ant. Hmm. What do you guys think? Do we use our eyes? Do we use a telescope? Or a microscope? Hmm. We use a microscope. Yes. So if you look at an ant, an ant is very, very small. Sometimes itty bitty bitty small. There are big ants and there are small ants. But with a microscope, we can blow that picture up and we can see all the tiny parts that an ant has. Does anyone know how many legs an ant has? <gasps> Do you guys know how many legs an ant has? Hmm, is it two? I have two legs. Does an ant have two legs? No. Count. One, two, three, four, five, six. An ant has six legs. Ugh. Ants make me. I don't like ants. <laughs> All right, so next one. 
What is this? Miss Karen, what this, planet is this? This is Saturn. Mm. And we would use our telescope to be able to see Saturn up close. So Saturn is a planet far, far away. And for us to be able to see all those pretty rings that circle around the planet, we would use a telescope. A telescope would help us to be able to see color. You know, Saturn has very pretty colors. Sometimes even in pictures, kind of looks orange, like an orangey red color. So a telescope would help us to be able to see all those amazing colors and landmarks of the planet. All right, next. Ooh, what is this? You guys might recognize this from our last nine weeks in school that we've done online, right guys? All right, so this is a book. All right. And in order to see a book, we would use our eyes in order to read it. Yes, books are not far away. We do not need a telescope or very small. Although some people may need glasses to help them to see clear, right? Which, not quite a microscope, but it does help some people to see it clearly. Some people do, do not need glasses. So, we just use our eyes, okay? All right, we got a couple more. Hmm, whoa, I've looked at this a lot lately. <laughs> A computer! Who all has looked at a computer lately? <laughs> okay, so what do we use a computer to see it clearly with? Do we use our eyes, a telescope, or a microscope? We use our eyes. We use our eyes! And again, some people might need glasses to help to see it clearly, but for the most part, we always use our eyes. All right, next one. Oh, beautiful star. Ooh. And we use the telescope to be able to see the star close up. I'm curious to see who all has a telescope so that they can stargaze. A lot of people like to stargaze and we use telescopes all the time. Um, so sometimes, you know, people actually go out on a regular basis and look at the stars and they can actually, like, they know the names of most of the stars, which is really kind of cool. So, but for a star, we use a telescope to see it clearly. All right, quickly, let's go through a couple more. Sheet music. Some of you guys are musicians out there and you guys can use this all the time. I used to use this when I was in high school, which was a long, long time ago. <laughs> um, but do we use our eyes, a telescope, or a microscope? We use our eyes. Yes, we use our eyes. It's something that we can just use with our eyes. Next. Oh. Next. Oh, what is that, Miss Karen? That's hair. Hair. Can you guys see the little tiny follicles of your hair? Hmm, what do we use to really look at what hair looks like? What do we use? We use a microscope. And that way we can see all the little tiny follicle, follicles in your hair. Yes. It's really kind of cool. Listen, if you looked at my hair, because I've collared my hair a couple times, you can see different colors. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, it'd be really neat to see what everyone's hair looks like in a cell, in a microscope. It'd be kind of cool. All right, so last one, guys. What is this? Looks like salt. Hmm. To look at salt, would you use your eyes, a telescope, or a microscope? Hmm. A microscope. Yes. Although we can see salt with our eyes, to actually see the grains of salt, because they're so little and they're very defined, it almost looks like a little tiny crystal, kind of. Um, if you look at it under a microscope, you really can be able to see it clearly and what it looks like. Again, the whole point is to be able to focus to see it clearly. All right? 
So faith is kind of like that. Sometimes, in order to trust God, we have to focus and take a closer look, okay? Especially since we can't see God, all right? So it's kind of neat to look at a couple of different things in a, in a new way, like a telescope or a microscope, right? And even we could also use a magnifying glass. Some of you guys have magnifying glasses where you're looking, you know, at different animals outside or different crystals or gems. You guys have collectibles. You guys, you guys love to explore. You guys love to go outside and see all the different things. And sometimes a, a magnifying glass helps you to do that as well, which is really neat as well. All right. So our memory verse today is coming out of Hebrews. Okay, guys? So, <clears throat> it reminds us that faith is about trusting God. Okay? Even when we can't see Him. Alright, we're going to look at Hebrews 11.1. Alright, I'm going to read it. We're going to read it all together. And we're going to do it one more time. This is our memory verse for the whole month of June, guys. Okay? The whole month. And we're, we want you guys to memorize this, practice it with your family, try to memorize it. It's really good. Guys, remember, it's really good to memorize these and so that you can always recall them later when you need them, right? All right, so if you look on the screen, or you guys do have papers at home, but if you look at the screen, our memory verse, faith is being sure of what we hope for it is being sure of what we do not see. Hebrews 11, 1. All right, guys, we're going to say it together. Do it with us, okay? Faith is being sure of what we hope for. Well, it is being sure of what we do not see. Hebrews 11, 1. All right, good, guys. Try it one more time. Try to get it in your head. You keep saying it over and over and over until you guys get it. And we're going to do this every week. All right? So one more time. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. Hebrews 11, 1. All right, good job, guys. Give me... Give each other a high five. High five your family. You guys are awesome. We're going to get all of this memorized and be ready for the end of the month. We're going to try to, hopefully, I'll get in contact with some of you guys and we'll see who can actually recite this. This would be kind of neat to see who's actually reciting this on their own as memorization, right? That would be great. It would be kind of cool. Yes. All right, so our lesson this week is going to be all about um, some men or stories in the Bible about faith. Remember, June is all about faith, okay? So we're gonna take a few minutes, we're gonna watch our video with our lesson, and then we'll come right back. And then we're gonna talk about what you learn about maybe a fella named Abraham. What can you learn about Abraham? Or even Moses or David, all right? So we're going to come right back after the lesson. We'll see you in a few. Hey, everybody. I'm Erica, and I'm so excited about it being summertime. More time. Show more time. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. One reason I'm so excited is because I have developed my very own wondering what that stands for. Science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. <laughs> and I'm not totally sure how things will go in my lab this summer, but luckily I have faith. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. You see? You see what I did there? Uh -huh. I have faith that I'll learn a lot and probably have fun doing so. I mean, just look at this place. Check it out. Whoa! Oh, wait. 
Check out this microscope! Microscope, 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 microscope! I've always been amazed how microscopes can let you see things that you normally can't see. Take hair, for instance. Ow. Mm. Ah, look at that one. See, it looks like a thin line. Mine's kind of curly. Ooh, you can't see it, can you? Ah. But put it under a microscope. Wow! Cool, right? What about the inside of a piece of grass? Put it under a microscope. Wow! Look at that! The inside looks like a whole bunch of smiley face emojis. <laughs> I mean, you never see that just by looking at grass. Today's Bible story is all about not being able to see everything, but remembering that God always does. It's like he's always looking through a microscope or something. So let's take a look at this story and see what we can find. <laughs> Unbelievable! Is that really what my hair looks like? Yeah. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Hebrews, chapters 11 and 12. Gotta have a little faith, 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 faith. Keep the faith. Take a leap of faith. You know, a lot of people toss around the word faith lately. We say you can break the faith or just take it all on blind faith. But true faith isn't blind at all. It's much more than just an inspirational word. True faith has to do with believing in all the things you can't see because you start with what you can see. Now, we can't see God with our physical eyes, but we can see the stories of people who came before us. Um, they lived in a broken world like we do, but they chose to follow God. They chose to trust his promise that one day he would send a rescuer that would make everything right again. The writer of uh, Hebrews in the New Testament tells us about some of these men and women in God's story. People like Noah, people like Abraham. Abraham. When God called Abraham, he was already getting old. He and his wife Sarah didn't have kids. Leave your country and your people. Leave your father's family. Go to the land I will show you. All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. God was planning on sending his rescuer as one of Abraham's great, 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 etc. grandchildren. But still, even though Abraham had God's promise, he still couldn't see the one God was sending. Still, Abraham went on a wild adventure following God's call. And even his descendants, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, all chose faith in God. Moses, too, was called by God from the fiery heart of a burning bush. Even though he was raised by Pharaoh's daughter, he chose to stand with his own people and face Pharaoh's anger to win freedom. We read about it like this in the book of Hebrews. Moses suffered shame because of Christ. He thought it of great value. See, when you check out Hebrews, you discover this huge list of people who followed God by faith, so many that the writer just stops trying to list all of them. Oh, but we can't forget Israel's most important king, David. Get up and anoint him. This is the one. Even though God had promised David would be king though, David spent years on the run from King Saul fearing for his life. Still, he chose to trust God. The Lord is my shepherd. He gives me everything I need. Now, none of these people in the Old Testament could see with their eyes how God was going to save his people, but they could see how he was working in their lives, how their needs were being met. So they chose to believe in his greater plan. They chose faith. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. That is what the people of long ago were praised for. Now, 
here's where the story turns. In Hebrews, we discover that none of those people in the Old Testament received what God had promised here on earth. That's because God had planned something better for us. So they would only be made perfect together with us. God's plan includes all of us from the very beginning of creation. So at just the right moment, at the perfect point in time, God sent his rescuer, the hero, his very own son, Jesus. Jesus showed us how to live. He showed us what God was like, and he told us the most important thing. If you love one another, everyone will know you are my disciples. Love God, love others. It's the heart of the whole story. But then Jesus was killed, and his friends thought the story was finished. Period. Dot. The end. Until God raised him back to life. Jesus has defeated death, and those who follow him can live with him forever. But how do you follow someone you can't see? Well, that brings us back to faith. Let us keep looking to Jesus. He is the one who started this journey of faith, and he is the one who completes this journey of faith. He paid no attention to the shame of the cross. He suffered there because of the joy he was looking forward to. So think about him. Then you won't lose hope. The early believers, Peter and John and other followers of Jesus, had seen him teach and heal. They saw him after God raised him to life. But after Jesus returned to heaven, the believers continued to live by faith. We have to speak about the things we've seen and heard. Because of what the new Christians in the early church had seen, they could believe in what they could not yet see, the end of the story, where God makes everything right. They kept the faith, and because they did, we can choose faith too. Woo! <laughs> Take a look at this one. Any guesses on what that is? It's the inside of a carnation stim. It's amazing how things look so different under a microscope than they do just with our eyes. It makes me think of Hebrews chapter 11. It's where we can look back to all these people in history who had faith in God. Even though they couldn't always see how things would turn out, they believed God and his promises. They live by faith. And you can live by faith too. In fact, having faith in Jesus and what he did for you on the cross is what makes it possible for you to have a relationship with God. Relationship status update. Even though we can't see Jesus in person, we can still have faith in him because we can see how he's worked in the lives of the people who've come before us. That's the one thing to remember today. You can know Jesus even though you've never seen him. If you want to know Jesus more and you don't know where to start, try talking with someone who has put their faith in Jesus. Or you can read the stories in the Bible of the people who trusted God long ago. There are lots of things we can see that can help us have faith. So I hope you guys have an awesome day. I'm going to look at a few more things under my microscope. Like maybe my nail. Ah, Let's check it out. Oh, oh, I need to wash my hands better. Hmm. This microscope tells you a lot. <laughs>
okay? They also saw him after, God, you know, they also saw him after God raised him to life. So remember, you know, Jesus was raised to life and he went up to heaven, right? So the early believers, they saw all of this happen. But after Jesus returned to heaven, they continued to live by faith, by faith, all right? Because of what the new Christians in the early church had seen, they believed in what they couldn't yet see, all right? The end of the story where God will make everything right. We are yet to see when God comes back, right? I'm excited for that day. I am too. It's gonna to be exciting. But we have faith, right? We have faith. And they kept the faith, and because they did, each of, each of us can have faith too. You know, there's people in our family, you know, I have several people who use, um, you know, who knew God before I did. My parents, they took me to church when I was younger. I wouldn't have known anything about God if my parents didn't choose to take me to church. You know, I don't know if your parents are taking you to church. Maybe your grandparents are taking you to church. Maybe it's a cousin. Maybe you're on your own and you come by yourself. But either way, some of us usually know someone who knew God before us. Karen, did your parents take you to church? They didn't. See? Me and Karen's story are different. We each have our different stories of how we learn about God and how we are introduced to God, okay? And the people ahead of us had faith, which in turn, we have faith now because we believe, okay? That's how that works. Later, with your family, you'll be able to actually do a project and see and write down some of those people in your own life about like who, who had faith, be, like who knew God before you did. It's kind of cool. You guys look at your family tree and see some people maybe in, um, maybe your mom and dad can tell you about maybe different people in your family, which will be really, really cool. All right. So they kept the faith and because they did, each of us can choose faith too. All right. So bottom line, I want you guys to know Trusting faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Mm. And we can know Jesus even though we've never seen him. You know, we have a relationship with Jesus, which is very sweet. It's very, you know, how would you describe your relationship with Jesus, Karen? He's my best friend. And that's, you know, even when Becky's describing faith, um, well, let me go back to my friendship. My friendship with Jesus, I talk to him every day. I know that he prays for me every day. He watches over me, he protects me, he guides me, and he loves me. And no matter what, you know, I make mistakes throughout the week or throughout the day. And when I go to him and ask him to forgive me, he's quick to forgive and he loves me unconditionally. And that's what I love is that he loves me no matter what. That's good. All right, guys, you, let's ask God to help us choose faith. Help us to choose faith today, tomorrow, every day. We want, we have to continually, you know, put our faith, you know, in God. You know, he's there. He wants to talk with us. He wants us to have that relationship, okay? And just like the people before us had faith, we have faith, okay? All right, so now we are going to end in prayer and, um, and then we're going to explain some of the different things that you guys have to do um, with activities in your folder at home. Karen, do you care to pray over us to help us choose faith? Sure, I'd be glad to. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this beautiful day, Lord, and this time together, Lord, as Becky taught the lesson on faith, Lord. And I just pray, God, that you would just help each one of us to have faith, even though we can't see God, to just really know that God, you are there. It's just like the wind. We can't see the wind, but we can feel the wind. And we don't see God, but we can feel God in our lives and watching over us. And I just thank you, Lord, as the children 
read over there or watch the lesson and help and do the crafts and do the lesson with their families, Lord. I just pray that they would just have a wonderful time together and that their faith in you would grow. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. So you all have been given a delivery. All right. We went, me and Miss Karen have delivered a package to all of you and well hopefully all of you got that package and we are going to kind of go through what you guys should see this week in your package all right if you guys want to pull that out if you have it but these are a few things that are in your um your notebook your folder you have a couple of pages here with names and pictures you, there's two sheets here you guys can cut those out use it as maybe a memory game if you want to flip them over and try to memorize it, it goes along with the stories that you learned today. All right. Or if you wanted to even just cut them out and paste them like on the, um, the construction paper, you guys can do that as well. Either way to learn some of, um, more about the, the stories that you had today. You also have a game. So this is a pretty cool game. You guys are going to have, like it gives you some pictures. If you guys, you can draw on, on me. If your parents can do it with you and maybe have more people involved, which would be really kind of cool. And you draw this on the back, on the backs of people, like with your finger or maybe a pencil. And you guess and see what it is that they're drawing. Really kind of fun. You guys can do that all. There are extra dis discussion questions in there for my older ones. You know, my you know fourth, fifth, sixth graders, guys. You guys, you can kind of dig a little bit deeper into the lesson and, and really, you know, get a better understanding about faith and some of the stories. So I really encourage you guys to have that conversation, you know, amongst yourselves to get a little bit deeper understanding. Also, so all this month, you guys have a booklet. It's called the Faith Log. Okay. If you want to call her the front, feel free to, that's fine. But each week, as we go through June, there is a sheet of paper for you guys to fill out together as a family. You guys can go through for this week particularly is um, who knew Jesus before you did. So you guys can write down hopefully that conversation with your parents or your someone in your family and you can write down the names of people who knew Jesus before you did, which is really kind of cool. You can find out if your grandparents knew Jesus or, you know, maybe it was a friend who, who um, helped your parents go to church or something and maybe your grandparents didn't go. You know, every family is different and it's really kind of cool to find the story of how that evolves. All right, so make sure you save that and you're going to, again, use this all month long. Also, we have the devotionals in there for you guys. You hopefully, there's, it's four days, so it's not the whole week, but it's a good amount. Um, so you guys go through each day, you know, you can do it with your parents, if the older ones, maybe you can do it by yourself, but it's really cool. Sometimes it asks you to fill some stuff out, um, to think about different subjects, and it goes along with the faith and the stories that we learn about each week, all right? Also, there is a craft in there for this week. It's a black cross and it comes with a little scratcher thing and you can design. It's really kind of cool. You take your scratcher and it makes it colorful where it's, where it's black. So you can do that this week as well, which is really, really neat. Um, but have fun. We really want you guys to get involved with your family. It's like you're doing more and more of the lesson at home with them. Dig deeper. You know, these, um, the instructions sometimes even has, you know, things like uh, discussion points that you guys can really talk about, you know, why we're doing the activities and how that um, goes along with our lesson. So it's really neat, it's really fun, and I hope you guys all get to do that this week, either today or sometime this week. So that is it for today. I hope you guys all had fun, and we will see you all again next week. Bye, guys. Bye.